Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, you're beating up your mom. Hello, my dears. My name is Mariana and welcome to my channel. So today I thought we'd do something fun and I would tell you all the things that I wish I knew when I was a beginner tarot reader. And there are many things, but I'm we're gonna keep it to the, to the key points. So before we get into it, just make sure that you're subscribed and make sure that you go follow me on Instagram to get daily wisdom and witchery tips. So being a beginner tarot reader is hard. <laughs> First of all, we have to learn the meanings of 78 cards, um, which is, you know, try to memorize 70 of anything and all you get is a picture. It's tough. It takes time. And also, you know, you have to be able to then translate the meanings of these cards into some sort of message that somebody can walk away with and actually use and adapt into their life to move themselves forward with integrity and that is a lot of pressure. We're going to talk about the things that I really wish I knew at the beginning that might be really good for you to know as you're maybe just starting out or you're branching out into reading professionally. This is also really important so let's just get into it. Okay, number one, the deck is important. So if you just pick up a deck or maybe a deck was gifted to you or you choose something because it's like really pretty, um, that's really nice but it might not be the right deck. Most people start with a deck that just kind of like catches their eye, right? Like I remember, I don't know, am I too old? Am I am I aging myself right now? When the Wild Unknown had just come out and it was like the hottest thing and like everybody had a Wild Unknown deck, I, I couldn't read with it. It just made no sense to me. And when that happens, you just have to kind of move on and pick up a new deck. But I find a lot of people actually kind of get stuck on like, I bought this one, like I want this one to work, I find it so beautiful. Or they're trying to use a deck that doesn't actually exactly match the symbolism of the Rider Waite, which is what our meanings are traditionally drawn from. And especially if you're reading for somebody, that can kind of stump you. So get get the get the right deck. My first deck was actually the Druidcraft Tarot, which I had seen somebody use and was like, this is so gorgeous. And I love like this Celtic stuff. And it was, it's a mean deck. <laughs> I don't know why, maybe it's just my copy of it, but like, it's not nice to me. I had to stop reading with it because I was trying to practice and, you know, get my bearings as a reader. And um, I just kept going away really angry. And I finally just was like, I'm gonna get the writer weight and just, and just do the basic thing and just learn it. And that was that was the right decision, but I wish I had known that from the beginning. So I could really appreciate the imagery of this deck and really find it to be beautiful, but, it wasn't the one I was gonna read with and that's just okay. And as you develop as a reader, you're actually probably gonna discover that you like certain decks for different things, that when you're reading for yourself, you're gonna use one, reading for a friend, you're gonna use a different one. If you're reading for love or you're reading for a career, you might choose different decks for those things too. So the more that you have to pull from, the more that you're actually honest about your experience with the deck, the better it's gonna be for everybody. Number two, there's no perfect answer. This is a big thing. And I think that this is where a lot of tarot readers start getting stuck in the beginning. When I started reading, not only for myself, but especially for like friends, and when I even was a beginning professional and I was reading for clients, I was really, really worried I wasn't giving people the right answer. I believe that I pulled the right cards, but was I really able to intuit what they were trying to say. When we pull tarot, they are images of what Marie Louise von Franz, who's a Jungian analyst, would call chaos symbols. We pull an image and it can be interpreted countless ways, right? We can look at the imagery or we can just intuit a, an a initial response or we can use keywords. Like there's so many possibilities. And so when we have this sort of chaotic symbolism that we have to get to the heart of it, we have to be okay with the fact that what we get to is not gonna be the same as what someone else is gonna get to. Oh, hello, I got a girl. I got a little girl. You wanna say hi to the family? Say hi to the internet family. You don't like me, do you? You hate this. Okay, that's fine. So if you give the same reading to five different readers, they're all gonna interpret it differently. And that's because we have to understand that we come at things from our own brains and our own experience. We don't want to project our experience onto the cards, but at the same time, we have our own set of wisdom that we've learned in our lives. And so we're going to view cards 
through a certain angle. And we have to be okay with that. We have to be okay with the fact that we're gonna do our best to interpret the cards objectively um, and intuit the best wisdom we have, which often there's a reason that we're reading it. We have to trust that whatever, you know, psychic reality we have is what's right for our client in the moment. We will absolutely be coming to the cards with our own personal biases and we just kind of have to work with that, work through it. So let go of thinking that there is a right answer. There isn't one. There is always opportunity for potential. There's always ways to examine life through a new lens. And that is your job with the cards, not to tell someone what is the right thing for them to do with their life. That's too much pressure. Let that shit go. Number three, you will get better. This was something that when I was first starting out, I was like, I, I'm going to suck at this forever. Um, and I did for a long time, but I, I did get better. <laughs> I really hope I got better. <laughs> I know that at the beginning it sucks and I'm not going to lie. Like you want, you just want to know what these cards mean, but honestly, you have to be patient with yourself. The more that you read, the more that it will sink in, the more that you'll understand what the cards are about, the more that you'll make connections. And that's what's really important about learning the tarot is that when you, for example, pick up the six of swords and you're thinking about transitions and you're thinking about leaving things behind and your baggage and you're trying just trying to understand what the card means it's going to really sink in if you pull that card for yourself or for somebody in a situation where it really clicks in then all of a sudden you're going to have this emotional and intellectual uh, connection to the card that is really formed by experience and it's going to help you learn so much more um, thoroughly it's going to be such a better way to learn and it's going to be faster, honestly. Even when we know the cards implicitly and we memorize all the keywords, really knowing it, really understanding it in context is a whole different story. Sometimes I still pull the Nine of Cups and I'm like, I don't get it. <laughs> What's the solution? You just, you got to read the cards. You got to practice and practice and practice. And honestly, I would say that that practice means not only just reading for yourself because it's really easy when you're reading for yourself to go and check the book because you need to or to just kind of leave it alone when you can't figure out what the answer is. I would recommend reading for friends. And actually what I did, which was a very interesting technique I made up. So I'd take a character from a TV show that I was watching and just pull cards for them based on the situation of the TV show and do a reading several different times and see how the cards might be showing different perspectives. So there's different ways that you can continue to practice even if you don't actually have a friend to practice with. Or if you're uh, you know, giving readings to a client, you're starting to read professionally and you want a little bit more practice on, on that, I would recommend, you know, trying to read for friends and pretending it is a professional setting, kind of taking that angle with it, or maybe just invite people to, to send you questions like on Instagram or something and just see if you can kind of figure your way through it. But just practice, 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 practice. You will get better. Number four, it's not your job to fix people's problems. It's never your job to fix people's problems. This is a big thing that I wish I knew as a beginner tarot reader when I started reading professionally because Honestly, full disclosure, when I would see that like little notification that I'd booked a reading, I would go into like a full panic because I would wonder what, like, what's this person's, you know, life situation? What, what are they working through? God, I hope it's not something too intense. Like, am I really going to be able to handle this? Am I really going to give them the wisdom they need? What are they going to do with their lives if I'm wrong? It was, it was really crazy. Um, and you know, my cancer moon was a little overwhelmed. So I had to eventually develop that awareness that it's not my job to fix people's lives. It's not my job to solve their problems. As a tarot reader, my job is to offer possibilities. It's to offer guidance for how they are actually experiencing the situation they're in so that they can make more empowered choices. And honestly, if you're a reader of integrity, you should never be doing that, in my opinion. You should never be telling people what to do with their lives. I think that that is kind of a, a big line you cannot cross as a reader. It's really just about saying, you know, looks like you're really frustrated in this situation. How is that experience actually manifesting in you? How are you, you know, resonating with that? Does that lead you to more clarity about what you want to do? So I can remove myself a little bit from this imaginary burden that in one hour I have to tell somebody who I've never met before what to do with the rest of their life. That is crazy. 
learn that lesson from my mistakes. Take that pressure off yourself and you're going to enjoy reading so much more. I really did honestly get to a point as a professional reader where um, I just, I kind of hated it after a while because I thought I, this is so stressful. I'm literally having a panic attack every time I book a reading because, you know, I did have clients who were thinking about leaving partners and thinking about quitting their jobs and having really, really intense problems with trauma and, and parents and children. And, you know, these really intense life moments that I was not prepared to handle for them. Um, and I didn't know, I didn't know the answer, right? So um, my job is just to interpret what the cards might be offering, not, not to tell them what to do. So take that off your plate. There are many cat hairs flying. There's gonna be an allergy attack in approximately 11 minutes. Let's see if I can get through this before that. Number five, learning to read for yourself won't mean that you don't need to get readings anymore. So when I got my first deck, I was really thinking that I would be able to read the cards for myself and then I wouldn't have to go to professional readers anymore because as much as I loved getting a reading, um, they were pricey. And um, I thought this was a very economical decision because um, so much Capricorn in my chart. I really, for a long time, did not go to professional readers because I thought I should be able to do this for myself. And in really pivotal moments in my life when I absolutely needed some guidance, I'd pull cards and they'd make no sense because see this video. And um, I just was getting really frustrated and really stuck. And I was not allowing myself to go see a reader because I thought I should be able to do this now. But what I didn't understand is that being able to read the cards and getting guidance are different things. <laughs> Even when you're understanding the cards deeply, there's things you're just not going to be able to reach inside yourself. There's going to be perspectives that because you live in your own mind, you're not going to be able to see. And so as a beginner reader, you really should still be getting readings. If you know, at whatever level that you do it, whether you get one once a year or whenever you just need it, or you get three card pulls or like really deep dives, however you like to get readings, you should still be getting readings. This is not only really important for you to recognize that you still need help. That's why we all came to the tarot in the first place. Um, but also because it is one of the best learning tools out there. It's one thing to learn the meanings, but watching other people adapt that knowledge is so important. It's such a great resource for practicing that yourself from watching the experts. And if you're a beginner professional, watching how other readers kind of conduct their sessions and how they structure things is really, really important for you figuring out what you want your flow to be and how you want to present yourself as a professional reader in the world. Trust me on this one. Get your readings. I go to a reader at least three, four times a year. It's really important for me to get my cards read um, by a couple different people I have in my my little team. So I recommend doing that for yourself. Last, um, but certainly not least, you can't pull the wrong cards. I know this is hard to believe because sometimes we pull cards and we're like, so when I was a beginner reader, I would shuffle my cards and cut the deck and I would choose a pile. This is kind of my style of doing things. And I would hover over the different piles and have like a little mini panic attack and go like, which is the right one? And then when the cards were all sorts of weird, I was like, damn, I picked the wrong pile. And this was like a crisis I had for a while. And I started getting into this weird brain loop of like, am I going to pick the wrong pile? And then I just didn't understand how to shuffle anymore. And everything was really weird um, for a couple months there. And one of the things that actually did help was creating a very specific pattern of shuffling. Um, so instead of leaving it up to my intuition to pick right piles and stuff, which just apparently made me crazy, I just said, okay, I'm going to shuffle exactly this amount, exactly that amount. And it did take away that pressure of like, how am I picking the right cards? But the answer was that I'm always picking the right cards. And this is, this is a really, um, big thing for us to except because we have to believe fundamentally in the magical principle that is allowing the reading to happen in the first place. So I believe that when we're pulling cards, there is this sort of synchronistic magic that is making sure that the right cards are coming through. And when you start to doubt that, or you believe, oh my God, I picked the wrong pile or I pulled the wrong cards, you're undermining the entire system of what tarot is and how divination works. And it starts to get really scary because you do this and sometimes like like me, you do it for a living. So you really have to believe that it works. You just have to have that faith. You have to believe that 
however you shuffled, whatever cards came through, they were the ones that were meant to. And it will happen sometimes that you'll pull cards and you'll be like, wow, these are the perfect cards. Those are such brilliant moments when everything just clicks instantly. And sometimes you'll pull cards that absolutely never make sense no matter what angle you try to come at them through. And I really think that happens because there's something that we're just not able to access. And we kind of are tasked with trying to try to get there and we don't always and not every reading is going to be perfect not every reading is even going to be good hopefully those are not the ones that people are paying for <laughs> but you know it happens so i went and did a reading for somebody it was a career reading and she wanted to know the direction her career was going i pulled the two of cups reversed and i was pretty confused by this and so i asked her about her relationships and she said no everything's fine i'm really happy i'm with somebody and you know, it re nothing else in the reading was pointing to some like catastrophic breakup coming or anything like that. And then when I finally came back to it and I was like, you know, this, there's something here about this. She revealed something to me about what it felt like to meet her, her partner, the person she was with, and how there was this magic about it, this synchronistic like coupling of like her and her destiny. And that's exactly what it felt like she was missing with her career. And once I made that connection, and once it was clear that this card was symbolizing something very personal to my client, it was so obvious what the card was there to tell her and what message, what guidance it was there to offer. And it was such a beautiful reading and it, it had such such meaning for her. I mean, bold. Just have faith. Just keep going with it. Keep asking questions. Keep looking for different angles. And you'll usually get to what it was there to say. All right, my dears. So I hope that uh, you got some good tips out of this um, from my mistakes that I made <laughs> um, as a beginner reader that I really wish that someone had told me. And I probably should have asked for some advice. Um, so just by being here, you're asking for that help and I'm very happy to give it to you. And I just am so excited for your journeys into the tarot. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, make sure to subscribe here and, you know, check me out on Patreon where I offer lots of goodies, tarot calendars and tarot meditations and moon meetings and all sorts of great stuff. So check that out. And we made it without me having an allergy attack, which is extremely impressive. Oh, no, there it is. Well, we made it. So have a beautiful, meaningful day. Go practice those cards and uh, I'll see you next time. Pandora hair on my nose. If I ever mentioned that I'm allergic to cats, <laughs> very dumb life.